everybody and welcome back to my Roblox How To series on everything that you need to know about how to make Roblox games. So today is a very special day. We've got another project that we're doing for this series. And as you read by the title, what we're going to be making is a password laser door. So essentially, the goal for this project is to have a laser door that won't let you through unless you put in a certain password on a key code to let you through. And then after a while, it'll shut back on again. So let's get started. I'll put it right here next to our other project, the collapsing wall. We did a couple episodes back. So let's first build our wall or our laser gate. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up for reference here so I know kind of what I'm getting at. I'll make mine about this big. And then what I'll just do is I'll duplicate it and I'll bring it down like that and I'll bring this one up. And then in between here, I'll add in the lasers. And even add some pillars, too. Just so it looks nice. Alright, so I've built up our little laser door here now. And I've put it all into folders so it looks nice and clean. If you want to follow this, you can. I put everything all in one folder. The structure is in here and then the lasers are all in here. So that's all cool, but now all this is, is it's just here for decoration. It doesn't do anything. So we have to script it now so that it'll actually function and we'll do things. So one way we could actually cheat this a little bit and not have to assign every single laser their own script to do something is we can instead just make one really big invisible part over these so that when the player touches that one big part, they die, which means we only have to use one script instead of like some 10 or 12 here. So if I add another part into here, like so, and I just cover over the lasers like this, then what will happen is we'll have it so that when the player touches this, they'll die like that. Make sure to anchor it, or else your whole thing will fall apart. Set its transparency to 1, so you can't see it. And then I'll just call this the kill wall, because that's what it's going to do. So then, what we can do is now hit the plus on the kill wall, and we're going to insert a script. We'll give it a hello world here. And... What we want to do is kill wall, which we need a variable for, local kill wall, almost forgot about this, equals script up parent, pretty straightforward, and then kill wall dot touched colon connect function. And then we'll put part. And this, what I'm about to write is a checker to see if what was being touched is the player or not. So if part dot parent colon find first child humanoid, then. So essentially the part that's being touched, its parent should be the dummy. Well, I mean, here I have a dummy here to explain it. But the player's group will be here, like the dummy. And then if you can find a humanoid inside of it, then we're going to do something. But if you can't find a humanoid in whatever the parent of the part is, 
then we're not going to do anything. So, back into the script now, and now inside of here, we're going to write in part.parent.humanoid dot health equals zero. Since we already know that there's a humanoid in here, we don't have to write find first child humanoid here because we already know it's there. And health is a property of humanoid. If we look inside of here real quick, humanoid, we search up health. It's right here. Health, 100. If we set the health to zero, well, dead. So, now, if we test it real quick, let's click play. We walk up to the wall. And now we're dead. Pretty simple. And we can't get through either, because it's a solid wall. Now, we have to code in the little password system so that things are actually functional with it being a door and not just a laser wall that's just there. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to utilize GUIs and remote events. So how we're going to achieve this is inside of one of these pillars, I'm going to add a click detector right here. And when you click on this part, what will happen is it'll open a GUI. So we're going to create a script also inside of this wall and we're going to reference our click detector local click detector equals script dot parent dot click detector and then click detector dot mouse click colon connect function there we go and inside of here we're going to get the player who clicked right here and you can see it in the little hint. So I'll write the parameter player. And now here's where remote events are going to come in. What we're going to do is we're going to send a remote event out from here to the client of whoever clicked on this. And what we're going to do with that is open that player's GUI. So we actually do need to create that GUI first before we can move on with any of this. So I'm going to go down into our starter GUI. We're going to add a screen GUI and then I'll click the plus and I'll add a frame. Now I'm going to quickly just make this. I'll put on a little time lapse and I'll explain what I do in a second. Alright, so I've made this little GUI here, and it's got buttons 1 through 9, and then it has this little display right here. It's a lot of stuff that I did here, GUI-wise, but if you aren't wanting to create or replicate this kind of a thing, what I'll do is I'm going to put in the description a link to this which I'll publish to Roblox for free so you can insert this into your game and then you can follow along with the scripts from that point so after you've done that whether you've gotten it from Roblox or you've made your own you should have to follow this buttons 1 through 9 and then you should have a display like this so what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that when each of these buttons is clicked, what it's going to do is it's going to insert that number into the top right here so it can be displayed. And then when you're ready, you can hit a button to confirm it and it'll send it off to the laser door so that it will do stuff and actually we need to make that button 
So let me make it real quick. Okay, all I did was I just added a little button that says confirm right here. And now, what we're gonna do is a little bit of a tedious process, but bear with me. What we're gonna do is we're gonna insert a script into each of these buttons, and we're gonna say when this is clicked, we're going to add to the string of the display right here. And it should be pretty simple because all we need to do is just create one script and then we can copy and paste it to all nine and then just change the number. So let me create it for one real quick. I'll enter a local script into here. All right, so inside of our script now, we're going to reference our button. So local button equals script.parent. And then we're going to reference the display. It's, it's going to involve a lot of parents. But script.parent, which is our button. So we can just write button, actually. Button.parent, which will be this frame. And then the parent of that, dot .parent, which is the main frame. And then dot .display. So then button dot mouse button one click colon connect function and then inside of here what we're gonna do is display dot text equals display dot text dot dot button dot name so the dot dot essentially connects these two strings together. So if we had display.txt being 45 and then button name was 3, it would end up being 453, which is pretty simple. That's all that this does. It just adds to and connects whatever you put here to the original right here. And then all we would have to do is copy and paste this to all other nine scripts or buttons I mean my apologies All right there we go now what we can do is hit play so that we can test this and make sure that everything works correctly so hit one and there we go now we have one on the screen five three nine seven we don't have a limit to this so we could keep going forever if you want to add a limit to this you're welcome to but we don't really need it for the sake of this so now we're going to code the confirm button. This is where our remote event comes in. So in s replicated storage now, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a remote event. So in here now, we're going to call this send password. Send password. There you go. So send password. Now we have that. And we're going to have confirm send send password to our main laser door, which is in the server. So I'm going to hit the plus here on the laser door, and I'm going to add a script. And then this script is going to listen for that remote event. But first, let's code the confirm button. All right, so now in the confirm button, we have the local script. We're going to reference it. So local confirm equals script.parent. We're going to reference a display because we need to do something with that. Local display equals script.parent.parent.display. There we go or confirm.parent.display. That's more concise. And then we're going to do confirm.mousebuttonOneClick colon connect function. We also need to put a variable in before I forget of our remote event. Local send password equals game.replicatedStorage.sendPassword. So now we're going to delete our display or all the text in our display so we're going to just put display.text equals and then just quotation marks so it's just blank it erases it and then we're going to do send password colon fire server and now 
that we've done that, we're going to go back into our laser door script that's going to listen for that password. And we're going to write game.replicatedStorage.sendPassword.onServerEvent colon connect function. Now we don't actually have a way to access our password now. So how are we going to do that? Well, what we're going to do is inside of here, we're going to tell the game what our text display says currently, which means we actually need to take this and move it below the firing here. So we'll clear it after we send it. So now all we need to do is take this and we need to put it in here. So whatever the display says at that moment will be our password, which is sent to our script right here. And then inside of here, we need to put the parameter there for that function. But it does say here, we do need the player in here since this is coming from client to server. So player comma password. Now in here, we're going to put, I'm going to capitalize these, if password equals, and then in here, we're going to put whatever password we want our laser door to use. I'm just going to put in 9718. 9718, there we go. So if the password is 9718, then we're going to open up our door. So I'm going to reference our lasers here. I'm going to reference our kill wall as well. So in here, let's put local local kill wall equals script dot parent dot kill wall and then local lasers equals script dot parent dot lasers so what I want to do here is I want to make it so that the kill wall doesn't kill you anymore so what we'll do is we'll disable this script when the password is correct so in here we'll put kill wall dot script dot enabled equals false so this turns off the script which means nothing happens which means our player doesn't die when he touches it we also need to turn off collision so that we can pass through it dot can collide equals false with our lasers we wanted to make it seem like the lasers are turned off so what I want to do is I want to set up a for loop. If you remember those from other episodes, I'll pin that video in the corner right here. So for IV in pairs, lasers, colon get children, this folder right here with all the lasers in it, do, and then V dot transparency parency equals one and then v dot can collide equals false so can't collide with them anymore and their transparency is set to one now we should be good before i forget we also need to make sure that our little GUI here gets removed after we've hit confirm. I'm going to name this password display. And then when we hit confirm here, the parent of this is password display. So I can just do confirm dot parent 
dot visible equals false, so we'll no longer see it. And we also need to turn it on when we use the click detector. So by default, this needs to be off, so set visible to be false. And then if we go back to our click detector script, which is this one, which we didn't finish. So now we're getting back to it, yay. First things first, we're going to send a remote event to our little GUI over here to tell it, hey, we need you to be visible. So inside of replicated storage, let's add another remote event. And we're gonna call this remote event show display. And then we're going to reference it up here, local show display equals game.replicatedStorage.show display. And then here, we'll write show display dot, or no, colon fire client player. We actually do need to add the player parameter right here. Because right here it says player who clicked. So we'll get the client we need to send this to from here. And then inside a password display, let's add a local script. And in this local script, we will reference this same little remote event that I've set up over here, which is show display. And then show display dot on client event colon connect function. And then pretty simple, just script up parent dot visible equals true. Now let's hit play and things should work out pretty well. So you click on it and there's our little screen. Now I can put in like three, two, one, four, nine, seven, six, right? Nothing's going to happen. But if I click on it again, and I type in 9718, would you look at that? Our door opens. <laughs> Isn't that really neat? So now we have a functioning door. And one last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little cooldown on it so that it'll stay open for... Like, let's just, let's go with 10 seconds, and then it'll close again. So, if we go back to this script right here, we're going to just do task.wait10, and then we'll take this, and we'll copy it and paste it, and then we'll just change up some things. Like, we'll change this one to a 0 0.5, we'll change this false to true, this false to true, and this false to true. That's all nice and dandy. So now, I play again, and I type in the right password, and I wait 10 seconds, and then the door will close again. So 9718, confirm, there we go, and then if we wait 10 seconds, closed on us again <coughs> if I try and go into it I die again that sucks so that's our laser door and we used remote events to help us achieve connecting between the client and the server so thank you so much for watching and in the next video, we're going to start talking about proximity prompts. Those are really useful. So, I hope I see you there. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.